So you just got a Panasonic camera, but don't know which memory card to get. Well, let's talk about which one is the best one for your camera. Hey everyone, Camber here, back with you. And today I wanna to tell you what is the best memory card for video for your Panasonic camera. And if you're new here, this channel is all about teaching you how to use your camera to make good videos, so consider subscribing. And I made a video a while back about what all the different numbers on SD cards mean and how to pick the right one for your camera based on your camera's max recording bitrate. However, the most common question I still get asked on that video is, hey, I just got this camera, what's the best memory card for it? So go ahead and let me know down in the comments what Panasonic camera you're using. So what I'm gonna do in this video is group all the cameras by their max recording bitrate and show you what card I suggest as well as how much recording time that will give you when filming at the highest rate. I have links for all the cards down below in the description so you can check that out once you find out which card you'll need. And also I have timestamps below so you can find your camera model and skip ahead to see what you'll need. And if anything I say about the cards is confusing as far as sizes or speed class ratings, go check out the other video I made here about what all the different numbers on the memory cards mean so then you can understand what we're talking about here. So starting off with the group of cameras that has the highest recording bitrate of 100 megabits per second, we have Panasonic's GX85 and GH4. So what I suggest for these cameras is a 128 gigabyte U3 card, and this will allow you to shoot at 4K for up to two hours and 50 minutes. And the sizes I'm suggesting for these memory cards is based on getting you close to a minimum of two hours of shooting time, which is my personal minimum for when I'm out shooting live events so that I can leave my camera rolling and not have to worry about running out of space. But if you think you need more space, you can always go with the 256 gigabyte card, which will double the amount of time you can record, or you can go with the 64 gigabyte card, which will be half the time. And next we have a group of models that shoots at a maximum of 150 megabits per second. And these are the G9, S1, and the S1R. And for these, I suggest the same 128 gigabyte U3 card. But since these cameras have a higher recording bit rate, which will give you better quality, that results in being able to shoot 4K for up to one hour and 54 minutes. So if you need more space, a 256 gigabyte card will let you shoot for three hours and 48 minutes. And for less time, a 64 gigabyte card will let you shoot for 57 minutes. However, the S1 and S1R also have a slot for an XQD card. And for those, I suggest this 120 gigabyte card, which will let you shoot for about one hour and 45 minutes. And this last group of cameras we're gonna cover shoots at a maximum of 400 megabits per second, and these are the GH5, GH5S, and the S1H. And for these, I suggest the 256 gigabyte UHS-2 V60 card, which will allow you to shoot at 4K at that 400 megabits per second for up to one hour and 25 minutes. And when you're shooting at these high bit rates of 400 megabits per second, that equates to 50 megabytes per second. So it's very important that you make sure you get one of these cards that has a V60 speed class rating, because that means that you have a minimum sustained write speed of 60 megabytes per second, and you need that to be higher than your 50 megabytes per second that the camera is recording, so that you don't end up with drop frames in your video. And these cards are more expensive because of the UHS-2 and the V60 minimum write speed. So if you end up going with the cheaper option of one of the cards that's only U3, the minimum write speed is 30 megabytes per second, so then you're gonna end up getting dropped frames. So those are the best memory cards that I suggest based on the max recording bit rates of these various Panasonic cameras. And again, I have links down in the description so you can go find the one that I talked about for your camera. Click on the link and it'll take you right over to what you need. If you do have any more questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments and I'll try to clarify anything I can. If this video was helpful, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you soon.